Welcome to the High Road to Leadership, a journey to the heart of success and significance. I'm Beverly Lewis. I am your host, and you are here on the very first episode of this brand new podcast. Uh, The high road is often a lonely place for leaders because uh, the air is clearer and the traffic's not as bad, but the decisions can be hard. The weight of leadership can be heavy. So my intent is to provide a safe place for you to learn, for you to enjoy, for you to uh, find the encouragement and uh, tips for mastery for your journey. So I'm so glad you're here. I'm I'm brand new to this, and I want to share, though, a message today, a story that has been very impactful in my life and has always been motivational to me, uh, has provided a lot of lessons and insights, and I look forward to sharing it with you. It's a story that took place off the coast of Florida. I'm a Florida girl, born lived here all my life. And I love Florida. There's a lot of good. There's a lot of bad. But this story actually started in the 1600s. And I'll tell you the reason it's important to me. I, I became a player in this story of my on my own level in my college years. I lived in Tallahassee, went to uh, college there, and was uh, able to meet a guy named Kim Fisher. And Kim's dad was Mel Fisher. Kim was there in college studying maritime law because I don't know if you've heard about the Atosha, but it was a Spanish galleon that sunk in 1622 near Key West, Florida, off the coast, uh, quite a bit off the coast. And when I met Kim, I was able to, we did some exchanging and I acquired a coin from that shipwreck. And it was before uh, all of the mother load had been discovered. I'm going to tell you the story today. The title of this episode is Treasure Hunt, because to me, we are all on a hunt for treasure. And when I wear this coin, which I do often, I had it personalized into a necklace, and I... I'm always reminded that today's the day. Actually, that's what Mel Fisher started every day, apparently. story Stories say that he started every day with today's the day for the 16 years that he was on the hunt for the mother load of the rich treasure that went down in the hurricane in 1622. Every single day, he would get up with the anticipation and expectation that this was going to be the day that he discovered treasure. So I think of that when I think of the Atosha. I think of that when I wear this coin. And I think of that when I thought of the most important message that I could launch us with on the journey uh, to the high road to leadership. I thought of this would be the perfect message to share with you. So today is the day. The treasure hunt in our life begins with the dream and a vision. And so it was for Mel Fisher. Mel was a diver. He he loved to hunt, uh, you know, go diving into wrecks and uh, all the exploration and the challenge and even the danger, the adrenaline, all of that. And he and his wife, Dio, both loved to dive. And they began, I, I suppose in the treasure hunting world, I understand that there's always the challenge of what, what's out there yet to be discovered? Oh my goodness, what a good question for our lives. What's out there yet to be discovered? A good question for today. Well, they heard all the tales of the uh, of the Atosha. And I'll tell you uh, that back in the 1600s, Spain was a major world power. And the Bank of Spain was being replenished out of the gold and silver from Mexico. So in 1622, there was a fleet of ships. Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce the uh, Spanish pronunciation of these names, but the the Atosha and the Santa Margarita were uh, among the the two that carried the biggest. There were other uh, ships in this fleet that had been sent from Spain to Mexico to load up with the treasure, this primarily gold and silver, and bring it back to Spain to replenish the coffers of that country, that world power. 
Well, they had they were on the last leg, which is a long leg of the journey. They had go- gone all the way to Mexico, loaded, made the trip to Cuba to reprovision and get ready for the long trip across the Atlantic Ocean. And not far out of Cuba, they encountered a hurricane. Of course, in 1622, they couldn't check the weather report. And hurricanes, uh, you know, now we get warning when they're coming. But back then, they didn't know. And all of the ships went down. All of the gold, all of the silver, all of the lives, except for two. Two deckhands were able to get in a a lifeboat and rowed back to Cuba and were able to tell the story of the sunken ships and the lives lost and the treasure lost. That treasure in 1970s, when Mel Fisher started exploring this story, he found that treasure had never been recovered. So his dream was born. What dream are you carrying? What dream has been born in you? My goal is to stir vision in people, to provoke you to uh, unearth some of those dreams that maybe have been, uh, they've, they've even died, perhaps. They were dreams you had as a child or a teenager or a young adult. Uh, but delay, disappointment, discouragement, these things can, can steal our dreams. But Mel's dream was born, and and he actually then began the process. And I'm going to give you six steps today, the first being the birth of a dream. And the second step in the process of the realization of his dream and of really any dream is the preparation. What exactly does it look like what you're looking for? What's what's in it? What's, what can be the goals? What are you trying to accomplish? And what Mel Fisher needed in his story is he needed a manifest of what exactly was on that ship. Was it going to be worth the cost? You have to count the cost before you start the journey and be sure that you're equipped and ready to pay the price. And it all comes down to the why. The why's got to be big. And so Mel flew over to Spain and spent a couple weeks in the library there where they're, believe it or not, they, they had a record of manifests of ships from 400 years before, but he, he got burned out trying to find it. And, and he realized that his, his zone was not research. So that's when he began to build a team. And he hired somebody to go over to Spain, move his family over to Spain, and look for the manifest of the Atosha. Well, after over a year of research, the the research librarian found it. And it was amazing and exciting. And the why was big enough to then go to the next stage of the journey. And the preparation, again, took a while. It's not like it happened. It didn't happen that first trip when he flew over to Spain to, to research in the library. And and I, I think that we get so much in a hurry that sometimes we try to skip this stage of preparation. We try to skip the stage of counting the cost and making sure that we're really clear on what it is that we're going after and making sure that our why is in place. I call it purpose, finding your purpose. I actually teach a course on this and it's so very exciting because when you get in that place where you are connected with your heart, when you know what you're designed to do in this life, when you know why you're doing what you're doing, then you really are prepared for the the master's journey. The third stage I want to talk to you about today in this story is navigation. Okay, so back in the 70s when Mel Fisher launched this treasure hunt to find the vast treasure, to be specific, actually, well, I'm not going to tell you how much it's worth because then I'll be getting ahead of the story, won't I? 
So he realized it was a vast, motivating, exciting treasure. Then he had to figure out navigation. How is he going to find it? You got to have a map. He had to figure out what tools he was going to do to be able to find the hidden treasure. And I'm telling you, it was hidden. A sunken ship, how do you search the Gulf of Mexico when you don't have GPS coordinates? Well, he figured out a way, and it wasn't easy. Again, he began to build a team. Some of them are called the Lost Boys, the young uh, teenage guys that didn't have a real focus in life and thought it would be really exciting and interesting and to get caught up in this hunt for treasure. I mean, really, who doesn't love a treasure hunt? So I won't go into all that they did to have to figure out how to search grid by grid in the Gulf of Mexico when you don't have GPS, but they did it. And so I would ask you, what are you, what do you have in your hand right now? What can you work with? What are the tools? Sometimes we delay getting started, like I was tempted to do with this. I, I, I was so excited about doing a podcast. I've had it on my goal list for over a year. And then, you know, people say, oh, it's simple. Well, it's simple if you know what you're doing. <laughs> Anything's like that, right? But it it hasn't been as simple as I had expected it to be. There's a lot of moving parts to figure out. And that's the navigation. Once we have a dream, once we have a vision, once we have goals, once we've counted the cost, then we got to figure out the process, the day-to-day, the action. How are we going to get it done? And you really just have to start with where you are, with what you have, and grow from there. So again, I have to thank you for being here for the very first episode of The High Road to Leadership. So navigation, they began the hunt. Well, let me tell you what, the hunt, in the case of this treasure hunt for Mel Fisher, lasted 16 years. How long has your hunt been going on? My hunt's been going on all of my life, and I hope it doesn't end because I know that the day your dream dies, the day is the day you start to die. But the day your dream comes alive is when you really come alive. And I want to live that way every day on earth, alive, dreaming, pressing through, hoping, on the hunt, on the hunt for the next thing, on the hunt for more understanding, on the hunt for more discernment, more uh, insight. I, I don't think any of us really and truly need more information. What we need is more revelation. We need more understanding of people. We need a higher EQ, higher emotional quotient, a deeper understanding of people and relationships and things. But I guess that kind of reveals to you what my hunt is. I don't know what your hunt is, but it's important because it's unique to you. When you're on the hunt, when you get that energy, when you've got you've done you've gotten the dream, you've gotten the vision, you've gotten the preparation, you've figured out some of the navigation and and you have the tools in place and now you put it into action. You hit the road. Road trip. Okay, so Mel Fisher's road trip lasted 16 years, and he did start every day. Today's the day. High expectation, belief, optimism, all of those things, positivity. My goodness, they serve leaders well and are so vital and so needed in this day and time. When you have that high energy, when you're on the hunt, your reticular activation system, and you will find out about me, I have a particular fascination with neurological science. I love to to, to learn about how the body and the brain and the spirit and the soul and the body, how it all works together to make us such an amazing, miraculous, wondrous creation with limitless possibilities. That's all the language from being on the hunt, for having a goal, for being on a journey, for being excited about it. 
But let's be clear. Everything that's worth doing, you're going to come to the point where the mood will leave you. I've heard it says that character is following through with a good thing, even when the mood leaves you. And the mood will leave you. It's happened to all of us. We all have bad days. It doesn't matter how much you love what you do. You're going to have bad days. But that's where resilience, perseverance, all of those characteristics of being on the hunt and being willing to stick to it to finish well, to see it through, to achieve the goal. Well, Mel Fisher's hunt, like I said, lasted 16 years. People thought he was nuts. He had to get investors. He had to get people to, he had to sell the dream. He had to get other people to invest in his dream because it got very costly. Financially, yes, absolutely, for sure. Emotionally, mentally, physically, oh my goodness, day after day for 16 years, being in the burning sun off the Keys and all around the uh, coast and between Cuba, it was, it, 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 it required a relentless attitude. And especially the cost got very high when Mel lost one of his sons and his wife one night when their boat sank while they were sleeping and they were unable to get out. Oh my goodness, that's the highest cost. Hard to imagine how he was able to recover enough to persevere and keep going. But he did. And that led to stage five, number five, which was the find. Oh my goodness, the find. In this case, after all the perseverance and all that he went to, the treasure cache of the Atosha mother load was located on July 20th, 1985. And as they brought it up and as it was recovered, it was worth $450 million, that treasure. And you know what is such a fascinating thing about gold and silver that is submerged for over 400 years is it doesn't lose its value. It gained in value. It appreciated even though it was buried. Oh, what a lesson for your dreams. Oh, what a lesson for your vision and your hopes that even they get shipwrecked, they get buried, hurricanes come. And oh, I've got some stories about that to tell you as we venture through these episodes together. I can tell you some stories about hurricanes, but what about the find? What about your find? Oh, think of how the exhilaration you felt on one of the most victorious days of your life. Can you think about that for a minute? And it's worth thinking about, by the way. If you don't revisit those moments, it's a very good way to flood endorphins into your system and and give yourself a lift. It's it's a fascinating thing that the mind doesn't know really the difference between what you're actually experiencing and what you're envisioning and dreaming and picturing vividly in your mind. And so returning to those high points, returning to those moments of victory is really worthwhile, especially when you're feeling imposter syndrome and feeling like a fraud and feeling like a failure, which who doesn't at one time or another? I'll tell you that anybody that's ever done anything worthwhile has had those feelings. But the mountaintop, the day of the victory, the day of the find, how fantastic is that? But one of the things that I've learned about mountaintop experiences is that it just allows you to see the next range it always allows you to open up your vision and to know that there's always the best is yet to come. And you'll learn that about me. That's one of my favorite sayings, and there's a story behind that that's for another day. But let me go ahead and go to stage number six, because we can't stay on the top of the mountain. And what Mel Fisher faced next in the journey was the sixth thing was authenticating the value of what he had found. 
And that is part of the master's journey. That's part of the lifelong journey that is always the authentication of the value and making sure that we line up. But he had to, uh, on a very practical level, you can imagine that whenever there is something of great value, there are always going to be counterfeits and forgeries. And that happened immediately. You know, once Mel had begun to find real Spanish doubloons and real Spanish treasure and gold bars, there there were, um, especially on the coins, there were forgeries. And so many people, once again, you know, just thought, what's real about this? But believe me, it was real. In fact, it was so real that part of the authentication was where I began the story and I told you I met Kim Fisher is he was in college studying maritime law. It's because they had to fight the state of Florida for even rights to keep ownership to that treasure. It went to the courts for years because Florida said, oh, those are our waters. That's our treasure. Never mind that you spent 16 years and millions of dollars finding it. It was our property. Therefore, it's our treasure. Well, the case was settled. And Florida, the state of Florida did get some, which the good thing about that is now we can go to the museum in, in Tallahassee, Florida and, and study all this and see the treasure. And it's so fascinating. But thankfully, Mel Fisher and his family was awarded a lot of that treasure as well because it was authenticated that his dream was real, the treasure was real, and his efforts were worthwhile they paid off. So that's the story of one quest. A quest is a search, a pursuit. It, all, it, is, it usually involves an adventurous journey. And of course, this story was certainly an adventurous story. I'm always captivated by people who are on a quest. And I, I, I would imagine that the reason you're still listening right now is because you're one of those people. So I would just ask you today, what's your story? It's important. Your quest is important. It's a setup for the next generation. Somebody's watching you and you're on a treasure hunt that is real and it's worth every step of the journey. And I am so thankful that I get to now partner with you, even just through voice and I, I, I want to encourage you to contact me. I'm new to this, so I don't even know how to tell you exactly how to follow and subscribe and all that. But I can tell you that my website, beverlyspeaks.com, will have these all of the podcasts. I blog. I write. I've written a book called Win From Within, The Heart of Success and Significance. And that is my journey, and I'm so glad you're on it with me. Thank you for listening today, and I look forward to sharing more stories and even learning yours, because the best is yet to come.